Hi, everybody. This is Virginia Milner coming to you from the the Cab County Library System, and we're going to make another lovely bracelet today. Every once in a while, I want to break out the stones, and today is one of those days. So we're going to be using a really pretty um, jasper focal stone um, uh, bead, and we're going to make a double link chain. It's going to be a very simple chain that consists of um, four millimeter stone beads and um, simple loops. So it's going to be really easy. It uh, won't take very long and it'll be just beautiful. So let's get started because what I wanted to use, I'm going to use some halite and some dyed um, synthetic turquoise is the red, I think. No, actually that's halite. So I have that, uh, halite all the way through. And I'm using red, black, and white, uh, but that doesn't necessarily have to be the colors that you use. Those are the ones that I chose. And um, I'm gonna, when I give out kits, I'll have some different colors as well. We'll have some um, agate um, beads, some halite, uh, some of them gonna be turquoise, some will be red, um, black, white, uh, kind of a pinky clear color. So it just depends on the kit that you get. If you're fortunate enough to get one of our free kits uh, from the library, then that's what you're going to get. And I also wanted to announce we are adding another library to the list of branches that are going to get them. So to have the kits. So the library the kits will be available at Decatur Library, Toco Hills Library, North Lake Library, and Clarkston Library branches. So it's still a limited number, but um, it is going to be more than we had before. So uh, I hope that you can get one of these free kits. And as always, these tutorials are brought to you by the um, DeKalb County Library Foundation for free, absolutely free from us to you. So I hope that you enjoy. Let's get down here to the other camera and let's get started on our piece. And good Lord, Virginia, I can't believe I did that again. Stop it. Okay, now, now I can see. So let's get down here to the other camera and let's get started. The things that you're going to need are our usual tools, round nose, square or chain nose pliers, and cutters. You'll also need a ruler for your wire and we're using 20 gauge wire. The beads that you're, I'm using are four millimeter rounds. I'm using um, stone, uh, halite, uh, which is a very calming stones. People keep asking me, what are the properties in the stones? And I really need to brush up on that a little bit more because everybody seems to wanna know. So halide is a good one for relaxation and calm, and it takes away stress. So we're gonna be walking around with a bracelet on that's gonna make us feel lovely. Then the other piece that we're, we're going to use is this beautiful Jasper, um, a, a Jasper stone with beautiful markings on it. And we're going to be using uh, jump rings. I'm using eight millimeter, uh, I'd say eight to 10 millimeter is a good size for this uh, because we're, here's part of the strand, because we are going to be using a double strand that needs to go, uh, that the jump, me, jump rings need to hold. You wanna make sure that you have enough room uh, for the uh, head pins to go through. So this is what we're doing. Let's get started. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is wrap my stone. And for that, we're going to need, I am sorry, my washer's going in the background, that I should not have done that, but I did. And then I didn't wait for it to finish. So that's probably what you can hear in the background if you can hear it. Oh, anyway, I need about 12 inches of wire, at least that's what I'm giving myself um, to wrap the stone because I wanna do a funnel wrap. I'm leaving the rest of it on there because I'm gonna use it for something else. This particular piece is really great because I can use small pieces of wire that I have left over from other things. But for this particular bead, I need a good foot of wire. 
So I'm gonna go down to the halfway point of the 12 inches. So right there at the six, and I'm gonna put a bend in my wire, and then I'm gonna bend it on the other end in the other direction. Now I'm gonna make a nice big loop because I'm doing a funnel wrap. And I, I want to make that a showpiece, kind of a showpiece out of that wrap. So that needs to be a nice size. So what I'm gonna do is take my pliers and slide my wire all the way down to the back of my pliers. Now remember, I have a hilt back here that's squared off. So I wanna make sure that I don't go back so far that I end up with a square loop, unless you want a square loop, which I don't. So I'm going all the way to the back here of my pliers just before I get to the squared off hilt. And I'm going to bring my wire over my pliers. Let's get over here where you can actually see what I'm doing. Back that up a little bit. Forward, there we go. So I've got my wire all the way to the back of my pliers. Bring the wire over the top of my pliers and around until I can't go any further. And then I'm gonna leave the wire where it is, open my pliers up, rotate back, and then grasp my wire again and bring my wire all the way around underneath my pliers until I have a loop. So there's my loop. Like so. so I have a nice loop. Let's bring that a little closer. And now what I'm gonna do, see I have a nice long neck there that I don't really want. So I'm going to rotate my loop until I get it as close to the bead as I can get. Nice and close here. So now I have a nice loop right on top of my bead. There we go. Now I'm gonna grab my round, my flat pliers and I'm just gonna do one wrap between the pliers and my bead just to hold my loop in place. There we go. So there's my loop. Now I'm gonna to go to the other side and do the same thing and I'll come back and finish this side in a minute. Slide my wire back to the back of my pliers again, avoiding that squared off spot. Bring my wire over the top of my pliers and down the side until I can't go any further. So there we go. Then I'm gonna open my pliers up, rotate back, snap back down and bring the wire the rest of the way around until I have a loop. And again, I have a little bit of space in between my, my um, bead and my loop that I don't want. So I'm gonna slide my pliers back in and rotate forward until I get rid of that excess space. And there my loop is right on top of my bead. And I'm gonna grab my square pliers again, wrap the tail of my wire around my loop, just under my loop and over my bead. And I'm ready to finish off my wrap. Now comes the fun part. I'm doing a funnel wrap, which is one of my favorite ways to finish off a bail. Move that way. Start with the short tail. So I'm going to grasp my loop 
I don't mean strangle it. I mean, just grasp it enough so that it won't move. And I'm gonna bring the tail of my wire around. And see the wrap that's closest to the bead. I'm going to go towards the head of my loop or the top of my loop instead of down towards the bead. So I'm wrapping up instead of down. And I'm being very careful about it because I don't want to pull on the wire. If I pull on the wire, I'll close up my loop and I don't want to do that. So I'm folding it around the loop and you can also use your fingers. I don't use my fingers on camera because if I do that, you can't see what I'm doing, it, but it is easier if you use your fingers. So again, I'm gonna, and you can flip this over so you can see where the wire is going. Fold that over. Then rotate, fold it over. Again, not pulling. Rotate, fold it over my loop. Rotate, fold it over the loop again. You can see what's happening here. I'm creating a nice little funnel wrap. Isn't that pretty? Okay. Hold it over again. And you can do this as many times as you want. You just need to make me leave enough space for whatever it is you're going to hook in here. So I think I'm going to go, let's go one more time. Let's flip that over. More over and see where I am. See, very, very pretty. I love this wrap. Flip it over and I've seen this done a couple of times and it's called several things. Um, if you ever watch Matt's crazy wraps or what crazy wire wraps, he calls it a scarf, which is also um, makes sense because you're wrapping it around it. It's kind of scarfing around the uh, loop. but I like to call it a funnel because you've got that space in between. <laughs> okay, so I think that's as far as I need to go. It looks very pretty and I'm going to finish it off now. First thing you wanna do is decide wh which you want to be the front and which you want to be the back. They're both equally lovely. I think I'm gonna make this my front. What do you think? Make that, that the front or make that the front? I think I'm going to make that the front. So I need to clip it off in the back so that I can tuck the excess wire down inside my funnel. Let's get back here where you can see what I'm talking about. Okay, so I'm going to clip it off right in the middle of my loop here. Let's clip that. And then I'm going to push this little tail down inside the funnel. Here you can see. Let's push it down inside. There we go. So it's just stuck down inside there. And there's my rat. There's my funnel rat. I'm going to go to the other side and I'm going to do the same thing. So I'm just going to grasp my loop. Doesn't have to be very tight. Don't have to strangle it. And again, I'm going to wrap my wire around and I kind of, I call it, little things moving. I call it uh, choking up on it. That's a baseball term, I think. But I just get as close as I can 
to the loop or what I'm wrapping, instead of being back here and trying to wrap, I'll go closer, particularly with this wrap, because I get a little bit more control. And I just kind of fold it over and around. And then you can turn it over so you can see what's happening. Yeah. And then fold it over again. And then flip it. Fold the wire over. Yep. And flip it again. Fold the wire over. And you don't have to do this when you this this way, but when you're just kind of starting out and doing this, I find that it's easier to do it this way than to try to wrap it around and you don't see what's going on on the other side. But you don't have to flip it. You can just wrap it. When you get to when you're where you're really good at it, there's no need to do the flip. I just like to keep an eye on it. Make it as neat as I can. If I see it's starting to get a little far apart, then I can push those wraps together. And stop when I want to stop. I'll give it one more wrap on the front, which is this part. One more time across, and that will do it. In fact, I probably could have stopped. Yeah, you know what? I can stop one wrap for that. Yeah. So this is the back. So I'm going to go ahead and clip it off right in the middle of my loop. Just give that a clip. And push that tail of that wire down inside of my funnel. There we go. Get down in there. And then make any adjustments that I need to make. And there's my wrap. Oh, I love it. I love it. I love it. It's one of my favorite things. Yay. All right. So now we've got that. So now it's time to do our links. And this is what we're doing. We're just going to have, we're going to do a double um, row. We're just going to do a simple um, connector, a simple link connected to jump rings. And we're just going to attach it to our bead. Like this. Yeah, I have to decide which side of this I like better. That's what we're doing. Yeah. All right. Okay, so as you can see, I have some done. I'm going to go ahead and show you how to do the simple link. And see this little piece that I cut off? I'm using it because it's enough. It only takes about an inch and a half, not even that, because these are only four millimeter. So three of those will not even fill an inch. Three of those will fill about three quarters of an inch. So I'm going to, let's start with, let's do a black, white and black. It's the opposite of this one. So the first thing I'm going to do is make a loop. 
I'm going to take my pliers and just grab the tip of my wire. I'm going to slide back um, with my wire about a third of the way down my pliers and rotate until I have a loop. And I just do it in very small increments. I see people take their pliers and go, and then they end up with a twisted loop. If you can do it that way, great. I find that it's a little bit better for me and a little, I have a little more control if I just use small turns. So that's what I do. So I get this a little less blurby. There we go. So now notice how my loop looks like a little P. I want it to look more like a lollipop. So I'm gonna go in with the tip of my pliers, just like that. And I'm gonna bend back my wire in the opposite direction of the opening of where it's open. I'm gonna bend it back until the wire is now on top of, my, my loop is on top of the tail. So now it looks like a little lollipop. So we're getting a lot of glare. I think that's from the light. I should turn some lights off. I'm gonna close it up, make sure it's flush against the tail. Make sure my loop is nicely closed. As much as I love these longer pliers, they're so slippery. Here we go. And adjusting my light to see if I can get rid of some of the glare. There we go. I think that's a little better. Okay. So now I'm going to introduce my beads. I'm going to do a black one and this pretty, this is a nice flat black um, onyx. And then I have this shiny um, agate and then another black one. Yeah. See, way more than enough. That's why you don't throw your scraps away. And now I'm going to bend my wire back again and make a loop on the other side. Now, this is the open side right here. This is my open side. So I'm going to make the open side on the op other side on the opposite side because I just find out, I just think it gives my, um, my link a more balanced look. I don't know that that if that's just me or not, but I just like the way it looks. So I'm gonna bend my wire back. I'm gonna clip it off down to about half an inch because I know from experience, that's all I need. So I'm gonna give myself about a half an inch of a wire, clip off the tail. I wanna hold on to that tip so it doesn't go flying across the room and hold your beads. Otherwise they'll go flying as well. Okay, I'm gonna grab my round nose pliers, slide my wire down about a third of the way down my pliers, just like I did on the other side. And if you ever question how far down to go, just go to your other loop, the loop that you've already made, slide it down until you can't go any further. And you know that's where you want your loop to be on the other side. So I'm gonna slide that down. Make sure nothing's sticking out the back here because you want a nice round loop. If you have wire sticking out, straight out, that when you make your loop, it's going to turn into a pear shape instead of a round shape. You want this wire to go around the pliers with nothing sticking out. Okay, I'm gonna rotate, open my pliers without taking them out, rotate back, clamp back down, Rotate, open my pliers, rotate back with them open, clamp down, and rotate. And I do one more turn, and I will have it closed maybe a little bit more. 
And that's all I need. And there's my loop. And now you notice when you start with your loop, your wire straight and you make a loop, the loop ends up on the side. But if you bend the wire back to the side and make a loop, the loop ends up on top and you don't have to make any adjustments. So it just either way works, just depends on what works best for you. Or I guess I should say what works better for you. There we go. All right, let's do the next one. The next one I'm gonna do, let's do red, black, red for the next one. I'm gonna grab my wire. This time I'm gonna go ahead and bend it back at the, about half an inch, like I did last time. Grab my wire, my pliers, slide my wire about a third of the way down, make sure nothing's sticking out on the back. And the easiest way is to slide my fingers over it. If I can't feel it, it's where I want it to be. Rotate, open, rotate back, clamp back down, rotate. And again, you don't have to strangle your wire. This wire is very malleable. It's very easy to manipulate. So you don't have to force it. You just need to hold it. That looks like it's a little bigger than I want. So what I'm gonna do is clip off a little bit, <coughs> excuse me, a little bit of this tail right here on the inside because I want to make my loop a little smaller. So if I take some of the wire out of it and close it up again, I'll have a smaller loop. I'm going to guard that end so that it doesn't fly in my face or anywhere else. See, it ended up, ended up over there. And clip. And now I'm going to close that up and slide down to where I want it to go. This is as big as I want it to be. Just close that loop up. There we go. And make my adjustments because I had to. It's there. Now it's a nice lollipop shape. There. Now let's go ahead and put my beads on the other side. We're going to cut this little piece off. Could straighten it out, but yeah, I'll just get rid of it. And I dropped my wire on the floor. Come back. Okay. Let's grab my beads. I said red, black, red, didn't I? Red, black, and red. This is my color scheme. You can do what you want. I could make these all the same. Red, black, red all the way down or black, white, black. Eh, but I want a little bit of a combo because I have all of these, all of those beautiful colors in here and I wanna utilize that. So where is my opening? My opening is here. Close that up a little tighter. Yeah, so my opening is over there. So I want this opening to be over here. So if my opening is on this side, I'm going to bend my wire back towards that opening on the other side so that when I make my next loop, the opening will be on the opposite side. Again, this is a Virginia thing. I find that it gives my loops a little better balance, but if you don't find that, you don't have to do it this way. Okay, I've got my wire third of the way down my pliers. I'm gonna bring it over the top of my pliers and down the side until I can't go any further because there's things in the way. And then I'm gonna open my pliers up, rotate back and clamp back down to the top and bring my wire around until I have a full circle. Nice. Now I'm gonna clip it off on the inside. Now that's another way I showed you that you could do this. I personally am not 
isn't a huge fan of this way because you run the risk of accidentally clipping off the other side of your loop. And that's a big fear. I've had it happen. I don't like it. But you can do it this way. If you've seen it done, you can. Just pull the wire a little bit away from the other side so that you don't run the risk of accidentally clipping. Don't get in a hurry and do it anyway. Then put your pliers on the inside with the back part, the flat part, against the other wire, the round wire, and clip. And I didn't clip it enough. I need to go back in and get off that excess. Where's my clock telling me I'm talking too much? All right. All right, and now I'm going to take a look at what I have. My neck, I have a little bit of space here in between the loop and the bead that I don't want. So I'm going to go back in and clip a little bit more of that off so that my loop will sit right on top of my beads. Snip that off. Notice I was guarding it so that. That little tail wouldn't go flying all over the place. There it is. And let's close this up. When I close it, it should be right where I want it. And it is. And there's my loop. So there are my two. links that I'm going to add to this one. And uh, now I'm going to show you how to put everything together. All right. So now this is where the jump rings come in. So now the proper way to open the jump ring, there's a couple of ways you can do it. You can grab a pair of pliers and then put your thumb on the other side of the opening, which is right here. So I've got my pliers on one side, I've got my thumb on the other side, and I just push down. And now I have a nice open jump ring. And then when I want to close it again, all I have to do is squeeze it together and then make whatever manipulations I need to make. But that's the easiest and best way to open a jump ring that doesn't ruin your circle. The second, uh, well, one of the easiest ways. And then another way to do it is to put pliers on one side, another pair of pliers on the other side, and twist. Again, twisting is the way to do it. You don't want to pull it apart because it's really hard to get your jump ring back in the form that it's supposed to be if you do that. So let's open a couple more. All right, now let me show you how to hook these together. So these are the ones I've already done. So I'm going to grab my plier, my jump ring, and I'm going to thread my jump ring through both of my links. Let's start with the ones that aren't done yet. Okay, so here's one of my links. I'm going to thread it on the jump ring, and I'm going to add the second one to my jump ring as well. And then I'm going to add that to what's in front of it. So this is the what I'm going to hook it to. I'm going to slide it on my jump ring. And I'm going to slide the fourth one on my jump ring. So I have all four of them on my jump ring. 
opens it up. And there we go. Nice, neat, and tidy. And then I need to add a second one because I like two jump rings just for the sake of security. Well, that's one of the reasons. Plus, I also like the look of it. If I'm gonna use jump, ring, jump rings, I like it to look like part of the design instead of just a way to link everything together. So I do two jump rings. Sometimes you can do three jump rings. It just depends on the look that you're going for. You might even make it look a little bit like chain mail if you use several jump rings. Let me get that. Mm, there we go, that's a little bit better. So now let's do the next jump ring. This is a little more challenging, but not hard. Okay, so I'm gonna grab my jump ring. Now, the, the key to this is to make sure that it runs in the same direction as the first jump ring that's on there. So I'm gonna slide the jump ring in the first loop, beaded loop, and then through the second beaded loop. Let's, let's make, make that a little easier. Let's do that again. Okay, so I go through the first beaded loop and then the second beaded loop. Then I need to go through the other two. So I'm going to turn it over until the loop is flat and then run through the third loop and the fourth loop. Now I wanna make sure that I don't get this jump ring caught in the one that I'm doing right now. That needs to remain completely separate from this jump ring. Then I'm gonna close it up. And there's my link. Nice, neat, and tidy. So I'm gonna go off camera and I'm gonna do the other side of this. And then I'll be back and show you how to link everything together. Be right back. Okay, here we go. Here is my piece. Now, here's what I did. I decided that I was going to, I did the links the same, but then I flipped it over. So instead of having um, all the red, black, and red to match, and then that, and then that, and then that, I flipped it over so that it's catty corner instead. And I got that from one of my students. Thank you. Was it Joy? Diana. I think it was Diana who did that on a piece that she did. Um, not exactly the same as this, but she just flipped it so that um, it went the opposite direction. And I thought that was kind of cute. And I always tell them, I am going to steal it. <laughs> Whatever ideas that you have that I like will be mine. So that's. That's going to be my band. It looks sort of like a little watch, doesn't it? And um, this is my stone. And I like this double strand simply because these stones are, are pretty heavy. So, it, and I only wanted to do a simple loop. So giving it um, two strands is a lot stronger. And I think a lot prettier than doing a little bunch, a little tiny um, uh, band. So that's what we have here. So now I'm just going to attach my links to my funnel wrap. So all I need to do is grab my pliers and open up my loops. And I'm going to do them both at the same time. I think that's faster and easier. So I'm going to open up one of my loops. It's the same as when you're opening up a jump ring, you're just opening it to the side, you're not pulling it apart. Oh, and look at that. 
this one's going this way and that one's going that way. So I'm going to have to do them one at a time instead. So this one will go on first and this one will go on first. And I may need to turn them around. We'll see if I can get it to work. It's easier if they're both going the same direction. So I think I'm going to turn this around just to make my life a little easier. I'm going to open this up. Take it off the jump rings. Yeah, because I want them both to go the same direction. Okay, so open the other side. Yep, back on the jump rings, check, make sure they're going the same direction the way I want. They are not. Flip that over, slide that on. Yes, close it up. My objective here is to have both of my openings going the same way so that when I hook it on my loop, it's easier to get it on there. All right. Okay, so now they're both open. Open here, open here. Slide on my, slide it on my uh, bail leaf. The one is on. Slide the second one on. One. Come on. And this is one of the reasons that this needs to be a simple loop, one that I can open and get on my wrapped loop. Okay, so they're both on there now. And just close it up. Make sure it's nice and flush against the back of my wire and the openings. And close the second one. Make sure it's nice and tight. There we go. Let's go to the other side and do the same thing. I hope these are on the same side. Yes, they are. So open the one. Open the other one. And slide them on. I guess first. This one. Back up here. Yeah. You're being cantankerous. This the right side? Yes. That one goes on. And that one goes on. Close the links, the loops. Make sure that they're close together. Completely closed. Give a little squeeze. Mm 
Here's the second one. Make sure it's nice and closed. Yes. Nice. And now I need to check because I've got these little links. This is an easy one to check the length. I can measure it on my ruler and that gives me an idea, but I also want to measure it on my wrist. My wrist is seven and a half inches. And this is about seven. I'm going to be making a clasp. So that should give me what I want because that clasp is going to take a good three quarters of an inch. And then I'm going to have a jump ring on the other side. So that should give me what I need. And if I want, I can also make my loop instead of using a jump ring. But let's go ahead and make the clasp first. So I'm going to grab a piece of wire. The clasp takes about three inches of wire. But I've got this long, here's a shorter piece. So I'm going to work from that and then cut off what I don't need. So what I need to do is mark off about an inch to an inch and a quarter from the end. And it depends on how big you want your hook to be. I'm gonna give myself about an inch and an eighth. I'm gonna find that little mark, that little spot, and I'm gonna fold it over. and squeeze these sides together. I want them nice and close. And I go long ways down my pliers. I could get, do the tip, but then I end up with a little hook at the top, a little loop at the top, which is fine. But I find it, that I aesthetically like it this way better if I just squeeze the whole thing together. And be patient because you don't want to over, over uh, hyphenate or whatever, overextend it so that the wires are crossed over. We don't want cross the wires. We can avoid it. Okay, so both of my wires are as close together as I can get. Side by side. And now I'm gonna go down, give myself about a half an inch down here at the bottom. I'm gonna lift that tail. That short tail. And I'm gonna wrap it around the long stem. I'm gonna go down about halfway down my pliers in order to hold my two pieces of wire together because I find that that's where um, my pliers are strongest and this won't wiggle. So I've turned my wire up. I'm gonna bring it over to the side and wrap it around the stem of wire. It's a very short piece of wire so if you want, you can use both of your pliers instead of your fingers. Wrap that around. I only need one, one and a half wraps around that stem. I'm going to clip off that tail. This little end here, I'm going to clip that off. I'm going to put it over here to the side so it doesn't fly across the wind. And then I'm going to push that little tip 
down against the rest of the wire. There we go. And now I'm going to make my hook, but I need to decide if I want to decorate my hook, which I think I do. I'm going to find a couple of beads over here. Yeah, one bead is enough. I'm going to put a bead on. Do I want more than one bead? Nah, just put one bead on there just to give it a little pretty, a little bit of pretty. And now I'm going to make the loop on the bottom. That's going to attach to the end of my bracelet. So both here are the two wires. They're side by side. And when I make my loop, I want it going also in this direction. So my two wires are side by side and laying flat. So I'm going to bend my wire over to the side. So that my loop is also going to be laying flat. I'm going to grab my round nose pliers. I'm going to go about half, maybe a little more than halfway down. I don't need too big a loop because it's going to be attached with my jump rings. I'll make it as close to the same size as my other loops as I can. So I'm going to go to about a third, a little more than a third of the way down, less than half. I'm going to bring my wire across and around to the side until I can't go any further because there are things in the way. Then I'm going to open up my uh, pliers, rotate around and down, and bring my wire the rest of the way around until I have a loop. And again, side by side wires. Loop. Grab my flat pliers and let's wrap my loop. Let me give myself a little cap on top of the bead, just a little one. So there we go. Flip off that tail. Just a little breath there. Just a little better job than that. Push that little end down, nice and close. Go. And it's time to make my hook. Okay, so I'm going to grab my round nose pliers. I'm going to slide my hook, what's going to be my hook. Again, my wires are side by side. This is flat. Slide my wires down my pliers as far as I can go because I want a nice big hook. And then I'm going to leave a tiny bit sticking out about a quarter of an inch sticking out back here. Then I'm going to wrap my wire around the pliers until the tip touches the bead, and there's my hook. And I like to bend back what I call the neck of my hook, just a little bit, to give it, give it a nice little curve. And then finally, I'll take the tip of my pliers and a little adjustment here. It's nice 
nice and straight. Yeah. Take the tip of my pliers and slide it under the bottom of my hook. And then just give it a little tweak up. So I'm going to tweak it up so that I have a little bit of a ledge. And there is my hook. All right, I'm going to attach that with jump rings to my bracelet. So I'm going to grab a jump ring. Slide on my hook. Jump ring goes through the loop. Jump ring goes through the one hook and the other hook. Now let's see, I want this to be the top. So I wanna make sure my jump ring or my hook is facing down, okay. And close it up. There we go. Make sure it's closed. Second jump ring. Slide it into my loops. One loop, two loops, avoid the other jump ring. You don't want to get caught in there. And lastly, through my hook. Close it up. And there we have it. Now all I need is a jump ring on the other side. Let's check my length here. Ah, I'm going to make a hook for the other side instead of using a jump ring. Why not? I think it'll be pretty. Should I, or should I just use a jump ring? I could just use a jump ring. Check the length. I think it's going to be too big. I won't make the, make the hook, but I think I will. Okay, so let's make a hook. Why not? I have this wire left over. May as well use it for something. So let's see. I've got red on one side. Do I want red on the other side or do I want another color? I think I'll do white on the other side. Let's grab a bead. I really like this pretty white agate. It's just so pure. It goes with anything and everything. All right, it's gonna be similar to the way I did the hook, except that I'm making a loop this time. So I'm going to make a wrapped loop. Do I want to make a wrapped loop on both sides? Yeah, I'll make a wrapped loop on both sides. So what I'm going to do is go down about um, an inch, a little more than an inch, about an inch and an eighth. I'm going to bend my wire back, slide my wire down my pliers. It doesn't have to be that large, but just large enough to go over both of these hooks. So I'm gonna go about a little less than halfway down. Bring my wire over the top of my pliers and down the side. Open my pliers up, rotate back. And let me check. I wanna make sure this is big enough. That might be a little tight. Let's make it a little bit bigger. 
Good thing I have extra wire. There. Oh, for my hook, my loop, give yourself another good three inches. Three inches should be plenty. So instead, I'm going to go down about an inch and a half. Bend my wire back. Slide my wire back to about three quarters of the way back down my pliers instead of half. Bring my wire across and over my pliers and down the side. Open up my pliers, rotate back, back down and bring my wire the rest of the way around underneath until I have a loop. So there's my loop. Now I could just go ahead and wrap this inside these or I can open these up and attach it. Whichever way works better for you is fine. I'm just gonna go ahead and wrap it. And again, I just need about one and a half wraps. Doesn't have to be a lot. One and a half to two wraps around. Rip it off. Watch that tail. Push down the end. Snug. Slide on my bead. Yes, yes, yes. So my loop, this, this one's flat. The other one needs to go the opposite direction so that my hook can link into it. Straighten out my loop because it's leaning a little bit to the side. There we go, that's better. So I'm gonna bend my wire back. My loop is flat and my other wire is going to go up and down in the opposite direction. So there we go. I'm gonna make a nice Large leaf, I'm gonna go all the way back or three quarters is enough. It just needs to be enough for this to go through and it can go this one. So I'm just gonna go three quarters of the way back. Drop a piece of wire. Three quarters of the way back, my pliers to make it about the same size as the other one. So that either one of those will work. Wrap that over the top, down the side, open my pliers, rotate back, clamp back down and bring the wire around to make a loop. So now you can see one loop going one way, one going the other way. Grab my flat pliers. I'm going to go ahead and put this on here and wrap it. Show you two ways to do it. So this, since they're both the same size, it doesn't matter which one hooks to my links. So I'm going to go ahead. These are open, so I could have just opened them and hooked them on. But instead, what I'm going to do is open my link, slide these two on. and then wrap it closed. So take my flat pliers and wrap around the base of my loop right between my pliers and my bead. Again, you only need a couple of wraps. Close it up.
Tip off that tail. And push down the wire. It's neat and tidy. And there, ladies and gentlemen, is my loop to go with my hook. I always like my hook to be as close to my loops as possible so that it won't slide in and out as easily. You make it nice and snug so it has a barrier. There, ladies and gentlemen, is my bracelet. What do you think? Ooh, ah. Oh, that is absolutely lovely. Neat, huh? And we made it all with some beads and some wire and some jump ring and a focal bead. That's it. We didn't use store-bought. Um, closer. We didn't use a store-bought clasp. We made our own. Yay for us. Oh, I love it. I cannot wait to give these kits out because I think you're going to really enjoy them. All different colors. You can do your own design. I'm trying to get my bracelet on so I can show you what it looks like. Get over there. There we go. Ooh, um, Oh, that is beautiful. I absolutely love it. Oh, this is lovely. Every bit of it is beautiful. Don't you just love double jump rings? I really do. I think it just makes it look like it was on purpose and not just functional. All right, that's enough of that. <laughs> so there it is. There is our beautiful bracelet. Let me move my camera out of my way. Oh, that's gorgeous. I absolutely love it. What do you think? I can't wait to, to give this out because I have all of these beautiful beads. Here somewhere, here they are. I have all of these beautiful, beautiful stone beads that I just want, I've just been wanting to use. And you're going to get a chance to use them with this particular video. <laughs> Uh, so that is our tutorial for today. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you're going to love this. And I, I kind of almost wish I had got, been a little bit more avant-garde in regard to the color scheme that I use because you're going to have some turquoise ones and just different colors. So I think it's going to be um, really nice to kind of, some of these are just black and white. So I actually have some that are, where are they? Over there. I had these, but I didn't have any green. These have a, like a moss green that are, it's just gorgeous, but I didn't have the bright color green that I could use as a contrast, but these are beautiful. I, I would love to make a necklace out of just out of stone but they're so heavy I've tried that I tried that with some African beads and I tried it with some stone beads and it was just you're walking around like this 
Frankenstein. So um, I have to use some accent pieces. And as a bracelet, that would really be very, very heavy. But um, some people like that, it, it would bother me. But I just love this. The little stone beads along with the big stone bead are just enough so that it's not too heavy or distracting. Um, and it just feels great. So, and looks great. So I hope you enjoyed this and I hope you'll make one of these. And again, these um, tutorials and kits, excuse me, come completely free to you um, from the DeKalb County Library Foundation. They are very generously providing this for you to enjoy and to um, use your creativity to make something beautiful. So I hope that you do. I hope that you'll show me what you make. Please get in contact with me at jewelrygen20 at gmail.com. I love it, love it, love it when I hear from you. Again, that's J-E-W-E-L-R-Y-G-I-N-2-0 at gmail.com. You can also go to the library Facebook page in order to access these videos. And that is facebook.com slash decab library. Facebook.com slash D-E-K-A-L-B-L-I-B-R-A-R-Y and go into the search engine, put in Jewelry with Jen, and all of the videos that I have done will come up. If you have a particular video that you're looking for and can't find, just drop me an email, give me a, a description, and I will send you the link. They are going to be out there from what I understand in perpetuity, so you don't have to worry about it disappearing. But there are, we've been doing this once a week for three years, so there are a lot of them out there. If you don't want to wade through it, or if you do, because it's fun. All the pictures are there, except for the first few, because we didn't have pictures. But um, all the pictures are there, and you can go, ooh, ooh, I want that one. Hit the link, up it comes off with the uh, video. Now, the only kits that you'll have are for the um, latest ones because they go very, very quickly. So if you are fortunate enough to be in the DeKalb County area where you can get to one of the four libraries that's carrying the kits, that is Toco Hills Library, North Lake Library, Clarkston Library, and Decatur Library. Give them a call, see if there are kits available, run over, grab your kit, turn on your video, make your piece and show me what you've got because I really want to see it. And we would really love to hear from you, good or bad. If you have any feedback, if you didn't like the video for one reason or another, please tell me. I'm always open to um, constructive criticism and something that I can do to make this better for you. I think that's it. I hope this isn't too long. That's a criticism. You make your videos too long. One of the things I hear a lot is your videos are so funny. Not sure what that means, but I hope they're also instructional and that they give, they, they spark your creative energies. Until next time, have a great week. Have a great, great weekend if you're there in the weekend. I hope to see you next time. And until then, bye-bye.